Hey Tech Timers, this is Andre of Andre's Tech Time and Product Reviews, where I review cool tech and everyday products that will make your lives just a little bit easier. And today I am coming to you live with no jive. As I bring you the big one you know you've been waiting for. It's Samsung versus Samsung. The Gear Fit 2 Pro versus the Galaxy Watch Active 2. Which is better? Can you dig it? So before I get down to the nitty gritty, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and ring the bell all below. So let's go ahead and get this kicked off by checking out the specs. For the Samsung Gear Fit 2 Pro, we have a display that is 1.5 inch, Super AMOLED, curved screen. The resolution is 216 by 432. The Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2, the display is 1.4 inch, Super AMOLED, 360 by 360 is the resolution. The processor for the Gear Fit 2 Pro is going to be dual core, 1 gigahertz. Processor for the Galaxy Watch Active 2, dual core, 1.15 gigahertz. So, a little, little more power right there. The RAM for the Gear Fit 2 Pro is going to be 512 megabytes. For the Galaxy Watch Active 2, we have 768 megabytes, a little more uh, memory there. The storage for either watch, exactly the same, 4 gigs. The battery for the Gear Fit 2 Pro is 200 milliamp per hour. For the Galaxy Watch Active 2, 340 milliamp per hour. So definitely a better battery on the Galaxy Watch Active 2, longer lasting. The dimensions, I have the large version, as you can see for the Gear Fit 2 Pro, so here it is. And for the Galaxy Watch Active 2, which by the way is the Bluetooth version, this is going to be the, uh, it's the 44 millimeter version. Either watch is IP68 rated, submersible in water up to 5 meters for one and a half hours. Both watches run Samsung's Tizen OS, which is a mobile Linux. However, the Galaxy Watch Active 2 runs the latest and greatest version. So let's get a move on and a groove on to the next section. Okay, Tech Timers, this is not going to be an unboxing for two reasons. First reason is either watch has been unboxed a million times on YouTube. Second reason, I no longer have the box for the Gear Watch uh, Fit for the Gear Fit 2 Pro, which I have had now for over a couple of years. I've only had the Active Watch 2 or the Watch Active 2 since November of 2019. So of course, when, whenever you purchase either of these watches, they'll be in the box, wrapped in plastic, everything looking nice and sweet. You will receive your quick start guide terms and conditions once again that's going to come with either watches you'll receive your charging stations and of course your watches as you can see the charging station is going to be magnetic for either watch okay let's get up close and physical with these bad boys so taking a, a look at the physical makeup of these watches let's turn them on their side you can see on the Gear Fit 2 Pro, there's nothing at all. On this side, turning the uh, Active Watch 2 on its side, you can see that there's actually a speaker. So, let's turn them over, and you'll see on the Gear Fit 2 Pro, the top button has two buttons. The top button is going to be stop, pause, play, select, and back. The bottom button, which is your power button, is also a back and home button. On the Active Watch 2, there are two buttons as well that function, uh, function exactly the same as the Gear Fit 2 Pro, but there's also a microphone in between the two buttons. Turning the watches over, uh, quick release for, the, for either band. Um, this is actually glued on because it wouldn't stay for some reason. Um, but quick release here, quick release here. Heart rate monitor, heart rate monitor contained within the smaller circle on the Active Watch 2. 
You've got your charging contacts there. It's two little brass connections. And on the Active Watch 2 or the Watch Active 2, um, the outer plate is also your charging connection, but it's also an ECG. However, here in the uh, United States, the software hasn't yet been released to, um, to you know, experience that function. So Samsung, it is really time to step up your game. So I've had the Gear Fit 2 Pro now for a couple of years. And the story behind this is, I wanted to replace my aging uh, Polar M400, which is just a great, great fitness watch. I wanted a color screen, touch screen, and built-in heart rate monitor. So that's how I ended up with the Samsung. So if I had to um, uh, differentiate the, the two watches, I would say that this is a fitness watch with some smart watch applications thrown in. And this is a smart watch with fitness applications, if you catch my drift. So let's explore. When I scroll down from the top of the Gear Fit 2 Pro, you can see the battery indicator. Hopefully there isn't too much glare. It's showing that it's disconnected from my phone. And then it's got the brightness level. So right now I've got it set at five. I'm trying to avoid the glare there. It's set at five. Let's take it all the way down to one and you can see how dark it is. And let's crank it all the way up. What's groovy about this is that it does not stop at 10. It goes all the way up to 11. This baby gets super bright. It's called the outdoor mode when it's on 11. And it will stay there for five minutes and then it will drop back, uh, back down to 10 and that's to conserve battery. So let's bring it back down to five and Scroll down again from the top, do not disturb, so that would turn off notifications. It's got the water lock mode, so that if you are you know, swimming, taking a shower, when you turn that on, it's going to lock the screen so that splashing water will not activate any applications. And of course, you have your music controls. So remember, you can store music on this watch and you can control it. Of course, you would connect your Bluetooth headphones to the watch. I believe that this application will also control your music application on your phone. I've never done it so. But let's go back. Now let's check out the Watch Active 2. When you scroll down from the top, here you can see your battery indicator. You've got your night mode, so it turns off, you know, some some uh, notifications, and then. You've got your brightness level. This is on five. Normally it's kept at three, but for the purpose of the video, I've got it at five. I'll crank it all the way down to one, and then I'll crank it all the way up. This only goes to 10, but it's super bright. And with the Samsung, their watches, their phones, their laptops, I mean, the screens are, are just incredible. So let's bring it back down to five, and let's go back. This is the find my phone. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the ringtone. So this is the, this will be the ringtone for the watch itself. So remember, you know, I can get calls, I can make calls, etc. And let's go back. That's your do not disturb. This would be the um, watch face always on. And that's great if you want to but I prefer to keep it off because if it's on, it's gonna drain battery. I just prefer to, you know, flick my wrist or press the button to turn it on. Settings, and there's more than one way to get the settings and we'll go through those again later. It says standalone at the very, very bottom because it's not connected to my phone. And right above that, there are three little dots which indicates that there are going to be three pages. So we're on page one, scroll to the left, and we've got theater mode so that if you want to watch a YouTube video, yes, that's right, a YouTube video. Why would you want to watch a YouTube video on your watch with a watch face this small is, you know, that's up to you. Anyway, flashlight, battery saver, airplane mode, water lock. Let me turn that back on. What's really groovy about this water lock is 
when you turn it off, it's going to play a tone to force water out of your speaker and your microphone. Pretty groovy, huh? Okay, so then you've got your Wi-Fi. Both, uh, of course, you know, can connect to Wi-Fi for updates and what have you. And we'll go to page three. Bluetooth, so if you want to connect your headphones and you've got your GPS, you can turn it on and off right here. Other places as well. You've got your battery indicator. Oops, we'll get back to that later. Battery indicator. This is the find my phone. So if you misplace your phone and it's connected to your phone, the watch is connected to your phone, you hit that and it's gonna ring your phone. And that last icon was for to turn off the speaker and the microphone. That speaker, it's now the, the watch, I have the microphone and the speaker on. If I press that again, then it turns off both. So let's take a look at all the apps. When you scroll right, this is your notification screen. So it says right now it's showing the sleep record, which I just took a little nap, not, you know, a few hours ago. Um, but you would see your, you know, like if you had email, if you had, you know, uh, text messages, things like that would show up on this screen, missed calls, whatever. On the Active Watch 2 or the Watch Active 2, when you scroll to the right, same thing. Right now it's, it's showing the weather, but there would be, you know, if I had it connected to email, if I had any calls, they would be there as well. So same, exact same screen. Let's put that down. On the Watch Active 2, I'm sorry, the Gear Fit 2 Pro, when you scroll right, so that, that was a, you know, some walking I did, if, and it just gives me some information. However, if I wanted even more information, I would just tap on the screen and I can scroll down and I can go through, you know, previous dates. So I'm gonna hit the back button and let's scroll across. So now it's showing steps. And once again, keep in mind, all of these uh, uh, screens, you can tap on it to get further information. And that's the heart rate monitor. Hopefully you can see that without too much glare. Um, floors climbed. And, you know, so this is showing the, the workout, um, you know, that I've done with this watch. And it says, you know, 30 minutes in the two days. I haven't really used this. I can also access workouts, all of my workouts, uh, my workout apps from this screen. But we'll check that out later. And this is the weather app. It's not connected to the phone right now, so it's not accurate. And then add. If I, if I press that or tap that, I'll be able to add watch faces, applications, etc. So now I'm gonna hit the home button and you can see it goes home. On the watch active two, if I scroll to the left, it's showing the heart rate monitor. And just like on that, you know, uh, here I can measure. So if I, if I tap that, it's going to measure, same thing there. But if I were to tap the screen, then it would bring up additional information. You see there's three little dots, which let, lets you know that you can you know, go down three pages deep. So let me hit back. That's the weather app. And of course, you know, once again, if I tapped on it, it would show some information. Um, this is the heart ring. So once the rings are completed, I will have met all of my goals for the day. These are some apps, uh, an app tray, I guess. And we'll cover some more of that in a little bit. Um, events, so if I wanted to set events, I could do that right here. Let's back out of it. Uh, these are fitness apps. And, you know, we'll cover some more of that a little bit later. Oh, and I'm sorry, let's go back. Okay, so alarm. So if I wanted to add alarms, I could do it here. Set reminders here world clock if i wanted to add you know another city do it there that's showing my steps for the day so far with this particular watch i spread them out over the two watches today and then just like with the gear fit 2 pro 
there's add. So if I were to tap that, I can add applications and I can add, you know, watch faces, etc., etc., etc. So now we're going to go through the rest of the apps. So with the Gear Fit 2 Pro, when it is turned on, if you press the power button again, it's going to bring up the app tray. And um, I'm just going to kind of breeze and tease my way through all of these because uh, once again, this watch has been reviewed a million times. So first up is settings and you can see display, vibration, device, connections. Let's click on connections, um, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, alerts for Bluetooth disconnection. So whenever it disconnects from the Bluetooth, it kind of gives a little uh, tone, you know, a little buzz or whatever. And then location, location is off. And I mentioned that for a reason, and we'll get back to that in just a little bit. Top button takes me back. So we've got screen lock, power saving. Power saving just turns off any of those uh, applications that's, that's uh, robbing, you know, draining the battery. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you know, GPS, etc. Inactive time alerts. Uh, just a reminder, you know, to, to get up and walk around and move around, whatever. Workout detection is pretty cool. Um, I have that turned on so that if I get up and start, you know, wor working out or walking around and I forget to activate the that, that particular fitness app, the watch is going to, um, uh, you know, detect that I'm, that I'm doing something and it's going to, uh, it's going to count that time and those steps and whatever, you know, as a workout. So health notifications, auto heart rate, gear info, that's the, you know, the info that pertains to the actual watch itself and connect a new phone. Top button takes me back. We've got music player, my fitness pal, um, very popular app. However, I've never used it on the watch itself. Um, I actually use it on my cell phone. So 24 hour log and you know, it says 24 hours, it will give you your workout information for the past day, but you could also go back in time on it. Exercise, let's go ahead and, and click on that. Right now it's showing for the last three days. Um, you know, the, the time that I've done some working out and walking and what have you, it counts seven days. And But actually you can go back in time on that. So let's click on workout and we'll take a look at the exercises. Uh, we've got running, walking, cycling, hiking, swimming, elliptical trainer, exercise bike, treadmill, lunges, crunches, squats, jumping jacks, Pilates, yoga, rowing machine, and other workout. Okay, what's just awesome about this is that you're not stuck with, with these, uh, these exercises, these workouts. You can customize, you can add and remove. There are a ton uh, that can be downloaded. So the one that I use the most every single day, several times a day, is walking. So as you can see, when I, when I turn, uh, when I activate this app, GPS is turning on. There's my heart rate monitor. There's start, there's um, uh, the target of two miles. And I think that's by default. I don't think I've ever changed that. I can customize the workout screen. There is the, uh, the button to, that allows me to um, turn on the GPS. As you can see now it's turned off, but I have it set so that when, when I turn, when I uh, go into the app, it turns on. There's auto pause so that when I stop, you know, running or, or walking or whatever, then the the watch stops the time the timer stops and the uh you know the steps or whatever guide intervals every every one mile so that every time i i, I walk a mile you know i get a tone it, it beeps you know i can view the log whatever so let's click on start walking and all of the samsung watches count down from three to the best of my knowledge um so you can see this is one screen. There are four little dots there that indicates that there are four different screens. That's the first one, second screen, third, and fourth. So while you're walking, you could use, you know, whatever screen works best for you. Top button is pause. I will click on finish and then finish workout. And then what it does is it gives me a synopsis of, you know, the, the workout, the, you know, duration 
you know, pace, speed, maximum heart rate. So let me get out of that. I'm going to hit the home button and I will hit the home button again, go into settings and we'll go into connections. This is my biggest gripe with this particular watch. Well, one of my biggest. As you can see now, location is turned on. And for some reason, um, when you finish your physical activity and you turn off the, you're finished with the app, it does not turn off location. So you'll have to go back in and turn off the GPS. That is something you will want to do. Battery life on this watch is not great. I have never gotten more than 10 hours out of this, even when it was brand new. As a matter of fact, because the battery life is so horrendous, I had to get another charger. One for the office, one for home. So that's one of my biggest gripes. So let's go back into the app tray. And we were at exercise, so we've got steps. And with steps, it's showing the amount of steps I've taken so far with this particular watch. I've got them spread out over the two watches today. And it shows the, the week that I've used this particular watch. And I can go back in time and take a look at you know previous dates. So once again, back button, floor is climbed, oops. Floor is climbed, heart rate together allows you to compare your, your workouts with another person. Two of the most important apps for me on this watch, I can keep track of my water, I can keep track of my caffeine, you know, tea, I'm a tea drinker, you know, you can add whatever you want in there. Um, find my phone. So of course, you know, if it's synced to the phone, and I misplace the phone, just tap on that, it will, it will ring the phone. Timer, I can schedule events. There's the actual uh, weather app, uh, calories consumed, food, I guess, enter more calories, what, what have you. Stopwatch, alarm, map my run. Um, if I, I use the walking app, um, there's also a running app, but you also have the option of using Map My Run. UA Record, another uh, Under Armour Record, another uh, workout app, and Speedo, Speedo On, which is your swimming app. So that takes care of the apps. So another great feature of this watch is the power button is programmable, and I have a program so that it launches my my walking app. So. Let me just a couple of quick presses there and as you can see activates the walking app and this these are the same four screens we were looking at earlier so it's so that takes care of this watch let's take a look at the Samsung Galaxy active watch 2 or watch active 2 whatever it's called so anyone that is familiar with the Galaxy watch, um, you know, the fancy version, you know that the big feature for that watch was the rotating uh, physical bezel. Well, the original version of this watch, um, and as you can see, this version, version two, does not have the physical rotating bezel. However, this version has the digital rotating bezel. So you can access your applications, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, from just dragging your finger along the bezel. So I'll go ahead and press the power button. And as you can see, it takes me to the app tray. So we've got recent apps, phone, contacts, Bixby, your digital assistant, Samsung Health, that's Bixby trying to connect. Let's get out of that. We'll get back to Samsung Health. Your weather app, Samsung Pay, Galaxy Store, settings, which we took a look at these a little bit earlier. It's just a, another way to get to it. And alarm. Now you can see that there are two little dots up there indicating that we have two screens. I can swipe across to get to the screen too, or I can just continue to drag my finger along the bezel. So we've got calendar, reminder, music. Gallery is a pretty groovy little app because what you can do is you can take pictures on your phone, 
download them to gallery and use that as your your uh, your background so like i love to wear daishikis so i can take a picture of one of my far out daishikis and i can have that the pattern of my di my daishiki match my watch or vice versa so uh, find my phone spotify world clock timer stopwatch and and the mondo which is your uh, it's it's another workout app under armor so let me go back and what we're gonna do is let's let's scroll across let's go into Samsung health Samsung health um, those are the fitness rings and once again when they are completed then all of my goals will be met steps and what I don't like and I think this is my biggest gripe with this watch is that it will give me a graph of previous days, but it will not show step counts for those previous days. In order for me to see those step counts for those previous days, then I will have to log into the app on the watch. So I'm sorry, Samsung, that is not groovy. So let's get out of this. And what we'll do is uh, scroll down, uh, zero floors, uh, floors counted or climbed. The time uh, that I've exercised with this watch so far today. Calories burned from activity. Uh, sleep record. Heart rate monitor. The stress app. Um, breathing, uh, breathing exercises so that uh, you, know, you can relieve stress. And calories consumed. Calories under the goal. Water tracker. And most of the glasses are on my other watch. And same thing with the caffeine tracker. Together, compare your weekly step count with friends, just like on the Gear Fit 2 Pro. And women's health, track your menstrual cycle and settings for these apps. So let's go back. We're going to go into the workout app. So, once again, showing the time that I worked out today, it's got the workout button. It's got a graph showing what I've done with this particular watch for this week. This week worked out so far, how much time and view log. If I tap on view log, of course, it's going to show, you know, the previous week and, you know, back in time, whatever. So let's go ahead and click on workout. And these are the workouts that um, are preloaded into the watch. So first notice that the GPS is turning on, just like on the Gear Fit 2 Pro, that's the way I have it set. And the heart rate monitor. Okay, the first uh, workout app is your light jogging, walking, other workout, cycling, exercise bike, running, hiking, swimming. And that was uh, swimming uh, indoor. This is swimming outdoor. Treadmill, elliptical trainer, circuit training, weight machine, more workouts. So customizable, just like on the uh, Gear Fit 2 Pro, you can add and remove these workout apps in here. So what I'm going to do is go into one of my favorite apps, which of course is walking. So with the walking app, just like with, with any of these workout apps, you know, they're gonna count down from three. So GPS on, and there are four screens. Um, the, the music app is actually considered one of the screens. And uh, actually on the Gear Fit 2 Pro, don't know if I mentioned that, but when you go into one of your workout apps, you'll have that music screen as well. So that's screen one, this is screen two, three, and four. So I'll press the stop button. That's my pause, stop, finish, and then finish workout. And of course there is a synopsis and this is just like on the uh, Gear Fit 2 Pro. And also just like on the Gear Fit 2 Pro, if I didn't mention that, there is a, a GPS map of, you know, your, the route you've taken during your run, your, your, your bicycling, you know, whatever. And what I like about this is that because it, you have the option of, of, of discarding the app, um, you know, the workout. I didn't do anything, so I can discard it. What is really, really, really 
righteous about this watch is that when you turn off your workout app that uses your GPS, it actually turns off the GPS. You don't have to go into location and turn it off. So battery saved. Of course, I have the walking app programmed on my watch face. We'll stop that, finish. And I'm gonna go ahead and discard it. And just like on the Gear Fit 2 Pro, the power button is programmable. So if I press that twice, very quickly, I have it programmed on this watch to close any open apps. It shows that I've got three uh, apps open right now, so I'm gonna close all. And this watch really lives up to its um, battery claims. Actually, I got up to, to three days with normal use. I use the GPS on this watch, I mean like, a lot of times throughout the day because I get up and walk like you know I try to get up and walk every hour or so and I work out with it doing calisthenics but we'll talk about the calisthenics in just a little bit um, I consistently get two and a half days of battery life so unlike with the gear fit 2 pro I didn't need an additional charger this watch lives up to its claims so that's it for the apps let's wrap this bad boy up okay so which Samsung watch is better. You know what, seriously, easy to answer, they both are. Say what? Check this out. Let's see if you can pick up what I'm putting down. If all you are looking for is primarily a fitness watch with some smartwatch applications, then it's the Gear Fit 2 Pro all the way. You don't need that. However, if you need more of a smartwatch with the fitness applications thrown in, then this is your watch. Now, both watches get the job done. Excellent screens, you know, just excellent quality. GPS is accurate, step counter is, is accurate. Um, workout detection is accurate, you know, very much accurate. So I don't have a complaint with, uh, major complaints with any watch except for the gripes that I mentioned. Now, I work out with both watches. However, the active watch, the, the Galaxy Watch Active 2, I use only when, when doing, uh, doing uh, calisthenics. The um, Gear Fit 2 Pro is my watch for when I'm pumping iron. I trade off, even though the, this is my um, daily watch, I trade off with both. If one is uh, charging, I use the other. But once again, when I'm pumping iron, it's the Gear Fit 2 Pro. I don't mind banging up this watch when working out. $180 versus $300. Can't go wrong with either watch. So that is my review. Thanks for hanging out with me here on Andre's Tech Time and Product Reviews. Keep in mind that um, once again, my, my uh, opinions are my own. I don't get paid to do this. And I purchase my own equipment with my own money. So enough said, keep on trucking, and I will catch you on the flip side in my next video.